afternoon. I hope I'm audible. Can you hear me well? Just need to confirm if I'm clear enough. Yes, Edward, you are. Oh, all right. So as usual, uh, we want to begin off with a word. We want to begin off with a word of prayer. Uh, anyone who would uh, lead us in prayer today, afternoon as we begin. Doreen, do you mind uh, leading us in prayer as we start? Okay, I'll go ahead and the prayer. Lord Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for providing us here today. Lord, we ask for your wisdom, understanding as we begin this session. Uh, bless our facilitator, bless everyone who is on the call, and may the knowledge being shared be beneficial uh, to everybody. And do your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good afternoon once again. My name is Edward Tumwine. I'm the Training and Mentorship Manager at Ultimate Multimedia Consult. And uh, we organize these sessions in partnership with the Department of Journalism and Communication at Macquarie University, where we also uh, offer short courses uh, in uh, multimedia journalism, digital communication, media literacy and information, and digital pedagogy uh, for teachers. Uh, the link, uh, the URL addresses are displayed on the screen and they're going to be shared in the chat uh, shortly. Uh, we also have a joint WhatsApp and Telegram group where we uh, continuously share training resources, uh, any training opportunities. So I would urge uh, everyone uh, to be interested in getting materials uh, continuously to join any of these groups. Just like uh, the link to the short courses, the link to the groups are also going to be shared in the chat. Okay, so without further ado, I would like to introduce our facilitator for our session, who is uh, Ms. Patricia Businje, who is a multimedia journalist and a digital communication specialist uh, working with Ultimate Multimedia Consult who is going to take us uh, through the techniques and ways on how we can effectively search the internet for re relevant content. Patricia, you are welcome. Thank you, Edward Tumwine. Uh, good afternoon to, to you all. I hope you can hear me. Yes, loud and clear. Okay, uh, good afternoon once again. Good afternoon. Okay, uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for sparing time to attend this session. Like Edward said, my name is Patricia Sinje, and I'll be taking you through how to effectively search the internet for relevant content. Uh, allow me share my screen. As we go through this session, please feel free to share. You can raise your hand. You can type in the chat, and I'll be able to get. I'll be able to get uh, your submission. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, we are able. Okay, so like I said, it's going to be an interactive and practical session. Uh, feel free to submit any question or if you need clarity or if you're uh, adding something, uh, feel free to share it in the chat or raise your hand. Uh, so today we are going to look at how to effectively search the internet. And I know that the internet is a one-stop center where we usually search for content. If you're looking for a topic, an organization, uh, the best 
two or where you can easily access this information is the internet. However, if you don't know how to effectively search or the correct words to use to type or the different tips, uh, the internet will give you millions of results. So it might be hard for you to actually read through and select the best uh, research or content that you're looking for. That is why this session is important because uh, it really saves time when you're looking for internet, when you're looking for information on the internet. So to start off, I would like to hear from you. Uh, I believe we have used the search engine before or a web browser. So I would like to hear from you, how best can you differentiate these two terms? How best do you understand a web browser and how do you understand a search engine? Feel free to raise your hand or even type in the chat. Anyone? Feel free to share. How do you best differentiate a search engine from a web browser? I believe we've used this before. Bruno, Bruno, can you hear me? How about Sharon? Okay, yes, Bruno, please go ahead and speak. I see you have raised your hand. Okay, we shall go ahead, but it would really be nice if you share your thoughts or what you understand by this term such that uh, we are together and we learn from each other. So uh, a search engine is an online tool that searches for results from the content published on the World Wide Web based on a search query that a user types in or submits. And a web browser is a software that is used to access the internet. So the difference here is that the search engine helps you access the content or the information that has been published on the internet, while the web browser helps is a software that will help you access the internet. So with this background and this simple review of what a search engine and a web browser is, uh, can we share some of the examples? Some of the examples of search engine, some of the examples of a web browser. Okay, sorry, I had, I clicked that, but I believe you can see my screen. So some of the examples we have for a search engine we have google search yahoo search Bing. i believe some of you have interacted with this before and the web browsers we have google chrome we have internet explorer we have mozilla firefox there's opera so i believe you're able to get the picture or the difference that if you're accessing google chrome that's our browser if you're accessing google search that's a search engine are we together can i hear a yes from someone on the call are we together do you need clarity on anything yes we are, yes, together. We are together okay thank you for responding I shall go ahead. So, like I said, today we want to see how best to search the internet, uh, how we can narrow our search results, and we get a uh, few results, but which are relevant to our search. And we are going to start with the institutional approach. Uh, this is 
where we look at how to access organizational information. For example, if you heard about Ultimate Multimedia Consult, where would you get the information to know about Ultimate Multimedia Consult? The best source for any information any information regarding an organization is a website. So if you are familiar with the website of that particular organization, it is advised or recommended that you check the website for that particular organization. So we are going to access some of these practically. Like I said, it's going to be a practical session. So please, uh, let's follow, let's engage. If you need clarity on something, Feel free to ask. So uh, I, I included some examples here. There are very many, of course. Uh, if, if you needed information regarding the Uganda Media Center, any updates, what has been said, ideally, the best source would be the website. So you click. The website and if you don't know if you do not have a direct link to this website but you know the name you go ahead to type or search for that particular name of that organization so in your search results you will have the section for a website just at the right side there's usually the option for websites, directions. So you click the website option. So this enables you access uh, direct information or even know more about that website if you did not have much information about it. At least you know uh, information published uh, on a website is accurate. It is real, you're not going to get false information from a website unless it's not a genuine website. So that is one way. Then if, you, if you're if you looking for it, we have sites that can enable you access uh, general information you might be interested in. For example, if you need information to do with Uganda's GDP, the best website to check out would be Ministry of Finance, Uganda. If we, if you needed to know the budget allocations for the different years in Uganda, we there's a website called budgetfinance.go.ug. So this website enables you access information enables you access uh, information regarding to budget allocations at local uh, for local governments. So when you scroll down, you're able to see uh, some of the breakdowns. There's view your local government, view your central government agency feed. So if, if you needed to know information about your local government, there's the possibility where you can search. So just below that section, you, you're able to search for a particular district. So if you wanted to know budget allocations for particular districts, this website is recommended. So uh, you can scroll down, select any district of interest. And select Kitgum. Let's give it some time to load. having some trouble with the internet, but let's give it some time to load. So such information can be useful, especially if uh, you're doing research, if you want to know uh, the different allocations, uh, maybe for the different projects, 
that are ongoing in the country. This site can help you uh, plan your activities. If you are an NGO, you can be able to plan and see where to invest regarding on these statistics. So let us give this site some minutes to load. We see how we can also select uh, different years. It gives you the option of selecting a particular year. So if you're interested in a report for a particular year, past year, you're able to access it. So like I said, we had selected Kitgum district. We, are, we want to see the budget allocation. Uh, slowly, you can scroll down. The statistics are still loading. So this is general. By default, it's there. But uh, you can select a particular year you want, because now these are results for the financial year of 2019-2020. So you can select, you can click on financial year, then you select the that specific financial year that you want. So if you're looking for budget allocations for let's say 2015, 2016, you click there, yeah? then there are options of selecting the type of information that you want. So when you click on type, uh, there are different frameworks that are there. There is local government budget framework papers, there are budget estimates, performance contracts, performance reports, work plans, budget estimates. So this uh, will help you if, you if you're specific, if you know the kind of information that you're looking for, let's say performance reports, and then you click search. The information that you will get will be for performance reports for that particular year that you have selected. So you can go through the years, the different allocations. When you hover around, you're able to see a brief about that allocation to give you the output name, uh, then the accountability, the type, and then the money. So you can scroll down to different sections. There's agriculture, and see the different allocations that were made for that year. can scroll down and check out the different sections. Uh, this, this is regards to education, classrooms. So uh, this site helps you access uh, the budget allocations for the different districts or areas in the country. Are we together? Do you need clarity on anything? And I get like a yes in the chat or someone speak if we are together with budget allocations. We are together. Okay. So another site I wanted us to look at was CIA World Factbook. CIA World Factbook enables you access information for specific countries. So let us check it out. So if you are a person who likes traveling, or if you're to write a report about a particular country, or if you also want to know about other countries out there, instead of taking time to search on Google or any other uh, web browser, you can directly search uh, on this site, CIA, World Factbook, and access this information. This helps you save time, the time you would have taken uh, to search about a country, then you get millions of results. If you know about such sites, it saves your time. So this is CIA, World Factbook. If it's your first time, to visit the site, you can read the about section. It's very important because, because you get to know what the site is about. So on this site, you're able to access the country's uh, maps. That's the location. So you can scroll down. 
there's the section of explore countries. This is where you search from. So you can search for any country of your choice. In this case, we can search for Uganda. If you have a laptop and you're trying it on your end, you can also try, a, try and search a different country such that we move together and we are at the same pace. So when you search for that particular country, information relating to photos, uh, background, the, the flag, all this information will be displayed. So you're able to read through and know about this country even before you go there or if you're doing any research, this uh, gives you the picture of what the country is all about. So you can also look at the geography, the environment, the economy. This is the content at the at the left side of the PC. I hope you can you're able to see my cursor. Uh, this is the different content that you can access about the country. So uh, this is recommended for any information about specific countries. Uh, it saves your time. You don't have to read through documents and documents and you like try to compare what this document is saying about this country. If you know about such a site, this can really uh, help you search effectively within a less time period. Okay, so that is it with organizational search. When you're searching for a particular organization, it is recommended that you search via the, web, the website. So let us continue. Here are some of the tips we can uh, use to easily search for information on the internet. And the first one is have clarity of information. If you're going to search for information on the internet, it's advised that you prepare some questions of what you want to get. This will help you spend less time on the internet because the internet has millions of results for you. So if you're not sure what you want, you will really spend a lot of time. So it's good to always have clarity. If you're looking for a report, what kind of report do you want? Then do not ignore a drop downs. Uh, these are like suggestions. When you're typing in Google in, or in your search engine, it usually gives you like, prompt, it prompts some suggestions for you. Do not ignore these suggestions because uh, you might know one topic, but then if you look through those suggestions, you realize there are topics that you couldn't have thought about. So that can also widen your understanding or know about some other topic to search about that is related to what you want. Then do not ignore the people also ask option. We are going to see this. Uh, then it's advised that when you're searching, please add clues to your search. If it's a class, a country, a school, any clue that can really narrow your search results. So let us see this practically. Uh, so if we are to look for communication, for example. So when you're typing the word communication, there are suggestions that Google will give you. What are you looking for? Communication jobs, there's communication media skills. So do not ignore such suggestions. They can help you identify a topic that you can read about to widen your understanding about something. Then let us first search for communication and we see the kinds of results we can get. So. You realize here, I'm going to highlight, I hope you're able to see it. We have over 5 billion results. So if, if you're to read about communication, how much time will you spend to read all these results? If you're to read just, just about one topic, communication, how much time will you spend to read all these pages? about the same topic. 
So that is why it's important for us to always add clues. Communication, what? What are you trying to look for? So uh, you can be specific and say communication uh, process and see what will come. So I talked about adding clues like country, um, class. So if the topic is still not so clear, you can still narrow it down until you get a few results. So I hope that's clear. Or we can try another topic, for example, journalism in Uganda. Let, let me narrow this down to a particular country. So we have journalism in Uganda, then we have just journalism. Let's see the difference in the search results. So this is just journalism and we have 1 billion results, 1 billion 470. Let us see where we narrowed the search results to Uganda, journalism in Uganda. So from the 1 billion, we have 15 million. And you can go ahead to narrow this down. We are going to look at some other tips. So that is one way you can add clues. Then, uh, Another tip we can use, I would like to hear from someone. No, but, no, but can you hear me? No, but can you hear me? Okay. Any volunteer to read for us what's on the slide? Use quotation marks to find exact wording. Thank you, Lillian. Uh, yes, this is another tip that can help us such for information on the internet effectively by using quotation marks. So when you add quotation marks to your to your to the to the specific words you're looking for, you it's like you're telling Google to bring the exact wording. Quotation marks will help will enable you get results for that exact wording that you have included. So let us see this. Let us see how we can use quotation marks. So for our topic that we had, Okay. 
Oh, sorry about that. My microphone was on. I was saying, uh, let us see when we add quotation marks, if there will be a change in our search results. So like I said, when you add quotation marks, when you add quotation marks to your, to the specific word that you're looking for, you get the exact wording because when you see when you scroll down, when you scroll down, it's just journalism in Uganda, you have different articles published about journalism in Uganda. But when you search for, uh, when you add the quotation marks, Let's see. So you realized uh, our search results have really been narrowed down to 47. And the articles or the search results received are specifically for journalism in Uganda. You won't find uh, any article maybe that relates to journalism or Uganda but like all the articles will have that particular wording, journalism in Uganda, journalism in Uganda. So if you don't put the quotation marks, you might receive such results that talk about journalism, then some that have Uganda, so the, are results that have either of the terms. But when you put quotation marks, you specify to get those such results that have the particular wording, journalism in Uganda, or that particular topic that you're searching for. I hope it's clear. Mm -hmm. Do you need clarity on anything? Please feel free to share. Okay, maybe we are together. Okay, uh, we have another tip. I would like to request Patrick Obita. Patrick, can you hear me? Patrick Obita. Patrick, are you on the call? Are you able to hear me? Okay, Sharon, Sharon, can you hear me? Sharon, if you can hear me, do you mind if you read for us the words on the screen? Yes, I, I can read. Yes, please go ahead. It says, use or, in quotes, to get options. By typing or, in capital letters between such terms, you are telling Google to look for matches, for matches to either term. This can be helpful when you are searching for, for something that that varying sources might describe differently. For example, climate change or global warming. Okay, thank you, Sharon. Uh, from what you have read, uh, do you, is it clear to you? How, what do you understand from this? I, I think this, this means that if you're trying to search for something, you can put in the word or so that Google is able to bring in results, other results that could be related to what you are searching for. Thank That's you, Sharon. Thank you so much. Uh, clearly, that is it. Uh, when 
you're searching uh, on the internet, you, there are some terms that different sources might refer to differently. For example, the term journalism. Some people may say press, journalists or press. So if you're stuck with uh, journalism and you just search for that, you might miss out on some relevant information published by people who refer to journalism as press. So in this instance, where you know uh, terms that might be referred to by different people uh, differently, it's best if you use capital OR, such that you get information uh, for either terms. In this instance, there is climate change or global warming. These two terms are related. Some people, when they're writing about climate change, they don't miss out global warming. Global warming uh, relates to climate change. So if you want to search for information relating to climate change, and you specifically search for climate change, you might miss out on relevant information published by some people who uh, use the term global warming. I believe that's clear. Uh, we are going to see how to use this. Uh, let me first respond to some questions in the chat. Sorry, I haven't, I hadn't seen them. No, but asked if you, if what you're searching for isn't there, what do you do? We are going to look at this, uh, some of the options to use if some of the information you're looking for isn't published yet. Uh, Sharon, what if I'm searching for journalism in Africa? Uh, this question isn't so clear. What's, I, I don't know what you wanted clarity on. Sharon, can you hear me? You can. Um, you, you said that for us to obtain the best such results, we have yeah. to keep narrowing, narrowing it to, let me say to Uganda, or maybe to get groom, something like that. But what if I want to get a, information about journalism in, uh, in the whole of Africa. I believe there are very many African countries. Do yeah. I have to first search for each and every country that I'm interested in? Or is there a way I can get information for the whole, let me say for the five countries I'm interested in at once? Okay. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, that's a good question. Some of these tips we are going to see, but let me hint on that. So if you're looking for information that relates to like a whole continent, you can narrow your search uh, result by specifying the file type or the particular document that you would want to read or access. Uh, for example, it can be a PDF, it can be a Word document, it can be a PowerPoint. So you can narrow your search, your search down to a particular file type. Sharon, is that clear? Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, so I want us to look at the use of OR. So like I said, OR will help you access or get such results that uh, different sources will refer to differently. So if we are to search for our example for climate change or global warming, let's scroll down to our results. I don't know if you're able to notice uh, the point I was trying to derive you at. So when you include or in your search, you're telling Google, uh, I need information that talks about climate change or global warming. So the search results you will have will have both terms. You will have articles relating to climate change. You will have articles relating to global warming. So by this, you do not miss out on information that different sources could have referred to differently. I hope that's clear. 
So you realize uh, there's climate change, climate change, climate global warming and climate change. So you do not miss out on some of this relevant information by using just one particular word. I hope the use of or is clear. If it's not, uh, feel free to type in the chat. We can elaborate more on that. So another uh, tip we can use to effectively search the internet is displayed. Uh, let me get someone to read for us. Nasaka Agnes, can you hear me? Kindly read for us what you see on the screen. Okay, I think let's hear from Zahara. Zahara, can you hear me? Can I read? Yes, please go ahead. Use use a hyphen into bracket or minus symbol to remove options. To narrow your results, you can omit certain words and sites from your results by adding a hyphen, is that hyphen? Symbol yes. in front of the word or words. You don't want your search results to include one. For example, journalism, practice, apple, fruit, jaguar, animal. Okay, thank you, Sharon. Uh, so the use of hyphen, uh, I believe you know there are words that uh, mean different things. For example, some of the examples here, jaguar. There's jaguar the car, there's jaguar the animal. We have apple, we have apple the company, we have apple the fruit. So sometimes if you're not specific, uh, when searching on the internet, you will receive information with, uh, if okay, let's say if you are looking for information regarding Jaguar the car and you do not specify, you might get information relating to the car, relating to the animal, and this can really take time, like reading through the different search results. So let us see how we can also use or. So when you add the minus symbol, it's you're, te you're telling Google that you do not want, you're eliminating information relating to that word. For example, if I type Apple, uh, you leave a space, then you put uh, the hyphen or minus symbol, then you put food. So by this, uh, you you get uh, information, other inform other articles about apple, but not apple the fruit. So when you put the hyphen, it's like you're saying you do not want uh, articles related to that fruit or that related word that where you have put the hyphen. It's one way of eliminating uh, such results that might come and yet they're not relevant to what you're looking for. I hope it's clear. So if we were to go through the search results we received, uh, we have different results that have apple, but not apple the fruit. Of course, there is a hint of, uh, Google will give you a hint of like maybe images of a fruit that it's also there, but the articles you will receive will be for uh, apple devices or any other article relating to apple. Is the use of hyphen clear? Feel free to type in the chat, please. Or unmute and speak. Is the use of hyphen clear to everyone? Okay, Doreen says yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Sharon says yes. Okay, thank you. I think we can go ahead. Okay, so uh, some of the other tips we can use, we have custom range. Has anyone used custom range before? Feel free to type a yes in the chat if you have used custom range before. Or Google Alerts. Okay. Uh, Darren says she hasn't used it before. Okay, let's look at this. So custom range helps you uh, uh, get information for a specific time frame. So if you want to access information, say for the past 24 hours or even the past month, past year, custom range is the best tool you can use to easily backdate or enter a specific time frame that you want and you'll be able to get those search results. Then Google Alerts for nobody who was asking if, if you're looking for information and it's not there on the internet. If what you're searching for isn't there, what do you do? Uh, so no, but you can set Google Alerts. Uh, Google Alerts help you get timely notifications of information published on the web about a particular topic that you have uh, set the alert for. So let us look at custom range and Google Alerts. I hope you can see my screen and CASA. Yes, we can see. So if let okay, let's search about Ebola. If, if you want to know about the Ebola outbreak in Uganda currently. So you will receive uh, such results. Uh, relating to different time frames, as long as it has been published on the internet uh, regarding Ebola in Uganda. So if you want to be specific, uh, say you want uh, the past month, uh, just after all the, the results we have received, uh, there's the section for news, where you can access uh, news articles, then there's images, videos, maps. There's a section for more. But after that, there's tools. I hope you can see it. So when you click tools, uh, uh, there's this section that will appear just below all, anytime. So click that drop down and you'll be able to see the different time frames that you can enter to access uh, the information that you want. So you can search for past hour, past 24 hours. You can search for past week, past month, past year. And then the last one is custom range. So if, you, if the option you're looking for isn't among the ones displayed, like past week, past month, you can click custom range. And you'll be given a dialog box where you can enter the specific time frame that you're interested in. microphone is on. Mine. Sorry. Okay, so I was say I was talking about custom range. Custom range will help you enter the data. So first, you put the month. For example, if you want information uh, regarding March, so you can put first you enter the the, the month, then you put the date starting when, and then the year.
to what period I uh, can select for a whole month. So after you click search and the results you will get, the date will be highlighted above that you searched for information for the month of <clears throat> May, starting from 1st to 31st, March, sorry. So custom range will help you access information for a specific time frame. Are we together? Is the use of custom range clear? Uh, we shall continue if we get a response. Could be in the chat. Sharon says no. Uh, Sharon, uh, okay, let me repeat, but I wanted to first hear from you what is not clear. Are you able to access tools? Sharon, can you hear me? Okay, you've understood. Okay. Yes, so that is how we can use custom range. Yeah, you click tools, then you're able to select the particular time frame that you're interested in. Then uh, let's see how you can set Google Alerts. Uh, in your search engine, you can type Google Alerts. So once you finish typing Google Alerts, uh, you select the first option. So one thing with Google Alerts uh, is that first you need to have an email address because these alerts will be sent to your email. Uh, second, uh, you on the gadget you're using, you sign in, you make sure that you're signed in with that particular email address where you want the alerts to be sent. So this is how the how the site looks like. So there's alerts, then there's create an alert. So this is where you type the information that you want. So if you searched for information and you did not find it, you didn't get the desired results. Or if you if you are doing research, for example, and it's continuous, you want to keep getting timely updates about this topic, Google Alerts uh, is really recommended. So we can find a topic, uh, we can find a topic like say fashion or Ebola, let's say Ebola. If you want to get timely information about the Ebola outbreak in Uganda. So you can type Ebola, but before you set the alert, uh, because just uh, below there, there's the option of create alert, but before that there's show options. So show options, uh, helps you be specific on what kind of alerts you need, you want to receive. So there are some questions you will have to first uh, have make clarity on, for example, how often, how often do you want to receive the alert as it happens at most once a day or at most once a week. So this depends on what you're looking for. If, if the information is really urgent, or really necessary, like you really want to get information about it, you can put as it happens. So every time information is published on the internet about this topic, you will receive an alert in your email. Or you can select at most once a day or once a week, because sometimes they can really be many. Then what sources do you want? Uh, automatic, automatic means anything news, blog, all that will come. Are you specific? If you want to be specific, you can specify either news or blogs. You can even select more than one uh, web or select uh, video, books. This depends on you, what you want. 
So if you want video and books, you can go ahead and select books or video. So you also uh, select the source that you're interested in. Then uh, language, English, if you want a different language, you still change. Then region, uh, you can be specific to a region if you want to. But remember, sometimes even other different regions can write about a topic that is happening in your country. So if you specify the region, sometimes you might miss out on uh, information published by other countries. But this is still upon you. Then how many? Uh, do you want only best results or all results? Uh, you can select all results because some you don't know what Google will refer to as only the best results. So you can also miss out on this if you select such an option. So once you have finished, you create the alert. So if it's created, you're able to see it in your alert section. You can create as many more alerts as you want. So every time information is published about this, this content, you will receive a notification in your email. Is the use of Google Alerts clear? Hello? Oh, yes, uh, Nobat says yes, Doreen, is it also accessible on mobile devices? Yes, you can try it. Uh, Nobat says yes, okay. So that is how we can use a custom range to access information per specific time frame and, and Google Alerts. Uh, let's see the submission. Sony says yes. Thank you all. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so one way we can also be specific in our search is by using country specific search. Uh, any volunteer to read for us what's on the screen? Country specific searches use yeah. site quotes and the country domain to explore sources from a particular place. For example, multimedia course site, Yugi online learning site, Ebola virus .yugi. Thank you. Uh, so with the country specific search, you're being specific about the information that you want. Uh, you're specifying that you need information for a particular country. So by doing so, you add the you add the uh, domain, the country domain for that country. So what does that mean? That means you have to know the country domain for that country uh, where you want that particular information. So in this case, uh, if we are to search for Mm, let's say multimedia multimedia sites. So you add that the, the specific you you add the specific country domain. So in this case, if you're to if you want results about this information, but you want sites that are in Uganda, sites that published about multimedia, but these sites are in Uganda. So you add the country domain for Uganda. If you want for a particular country, you can still uh, add that country domain for that country, but that means you have to know it such that you don't get uh, wrong results. So if we are to go through the search results we have received, uh, most of the sites you realize are in Uganda. Uh, these are university sites, MOOC. So this you are 
narrowing down your search results to a particular country. I believe that's clear. If it's not, we can still uh, repeat it. Uh, Sharon said, could you please repeat it for me? Okay. So I was saying with country specific search, uh, you are looking for information from sites that are in a particular country. For example, if you want to even if you're in a different country, or let's say us, we want to know about uh, online learning platforms, but we want to know online learning platforms that are available in Uganda. So what do you do? You type in that particular, that site you're looking for. Let's say online learning site, because sometimes you don't know. Sometimes you don't know. So this can guide you if you have the topic in mind. You know, I want an online learning site, but I want one that is particular in Uganda. So you add the full colon and then the country domain. In this case, it's .ug. And then you search. So you're going to get online learning sites that are in Uganda. I don't know if this is clear. So even if you're to go through the search results, you have Umu e-learning, uh, Kabale University virtual learning environment. So all the, all the search results that you will get will be about that topic for that particular country. So in this instance, we searched for online learning site in .ug. So the site, the search results we get are about online sites, but for that particular country, which is Uganda. I don't know if that makes sense to you, Sharon. Yes, yes. Okay, so that is searching by country domain. Now let us look at searching by, uh, organizational by organization. So you can search by country, you can search by organization. However, like I said, you have to know this information. Like if you're searching by an organization, what kind of organization is it? So organizations have different domain name extensions depending on their nature. For NGOs, it's .org. So if you're looking for information for a particular organization, you can type uh, that particular topic and then at the end you add .org if it's an NGO and the information you will get will relate to NGOs. If it's a company, it's, the, it's usually .com. Uh, for government, you realize that government agencies have different uh, domain name extensions. So there's .go.ug for Uganda, uh, there's .gov for USA. So like I said, some of this information, you can search for it on the internet. Uh, you can search for uh, domain name extension for this organi for organizations in USA or particular country. If you're not aware, then from that, you, you're able to search for that, uh, search for your content by specifying it uh, using the domain name extension for the organization. I hope uh, by organization, it's also clear. And we also have for academic websites. So usually for academic websites, they add .se in Uganda and even UK. So you find that if you're looking for an, organ, uh, an academic website, once you have typed the name, you can go ahead and add .sc.ug, such that you are specific 
about the search results. Okay, so I wanted us to also look at searching by site. You can limit your search to an organ, a website. But this happens when you know that website. For example, uh, there's this there's this online learning platform. It's called Diaka Dicto Network. Uh, they usually have multimedia content. So if if you know of a site, you can search uh, directly on that site. For example, if you have to type multimedia course, but this time I want, then you put the name of the site. So searching by site, first you have to know the site and then you must know the information you're looking for, the topic. So once you put the topic, put the full colon, then put the site. Now that way you save a lot of time instead of first searching for the topic, then you go ahead to scroll down to look for that website you're looking for. If you know the site, just go ahead and type in the site after the topic and then search directly. So the results you will get, you realize here, this is from Yaka, Multimedia Journalism, but all the content is from, is on this website. So searching by site can also help you save time and easily get the information you need. So you can try out one with Macquarie University, you can try out with one with any government or government site. Okay, so another tip we can use is searching by file type. I remember when Nobat, I think it was Sharon, who asked about if you want information that is like the whole of Africa. Would you have to search by country, every country search? No, you can narrow your search by using a file type extension. Uh, the, these file types are known sometimes, but if you don't know, you can also inquire maybe from a friend. You know there are PowerPoint presentations. So if you're looking for, a, if you're searching for information, you can also narrow down if you're interested in a presentation, add .ppt or .pptx. Then you can search by PDF or document. So in this case, if you search for PowerPoint PPT, you'll get PowerPoint presentations. If you add XLS, you'll get Excel sheets, but relating to that topic. So that way you save a lot of time. You can search for communication models. But in this case, we be specific and add PDF. So in this case, the search results you get will be in PDF format because you specified to a particular type, file type, which is PDF. If it's PPT, you will get PowerPoint presentations. So one, this is also one way you can search. You can easily navigate uh, through the internet. Is that clear? Are we still together? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, then we have we can also get information from SlideShare. Has anyone used SlideShare before? We can go through this together. Has anyone used SlideShare? You can share with us or tell us about it. Okay, so SlideShare uh, helps you access PowerPoint presentations that have been published on the web. It's very efficient and convenient. Uh, we are going to look at it. 
if if you're looking for particular information you can also use slide share see what other people have written about it see what they have presented about it that way you gain information and then there's getting content from google scholar yes uh for people who are interested in reading more books google scholar is recommended and then there's use of google cash or cache i don't know how some of you pronounce it uh but may i say it's cash you can try and search on google how to pronounce this word but uh, the use of Google Cache, it helps you access information that has been deleted on a page, on a web page. So you, sometimes when a person shares a link or a topic, you try to access it, uh, maybe tells you page cannot be found or the content doesn't display, Google Cache helps you access uh, information even on a deleted page. So let us see how we can use SlideShare, uh, how we can access Google Scholar and Google Cache. So for SlideShare, you will type in SlideShare. Uh, it's the first option. Okay, so like I said, uh, it help, it's you, you're able to access presentations done by other people. So you can gain more knowledge about a topic by reading through such presentations. Uh, you can go ahead and sign up. Uh, it gives a trial for 30 days. Uh, sign up, have an account and access the different content. So. Uh, at the search bar here, you can search for any topic of interest. Uh, I've been giving myself topics. I don't know, can anyone share a topic in the chat and we search for that? Okay, any topic in the chat under employment? Let's see. Let's search for it. It's under payment, yeah. under employment. Oh, <laughs> under payment. Okay, so these are our search results, uh, different presentations, slides prepared by different people, group discussions, On you can try to preview uh, through the different titles and see if you can get any article to read. So you can read through all these. If, you're, if you've picked interest, let's say this one, you click on the slide that you've picked interest in. So by this, you can go through it. it shows you the number of slides, 14 slides. Uh, there are YouTube videos here, I think. Uh, no longer supported on slide share. Okay. Type of return. So you read through the content and see if it relates to what you're saying or what you wanted. You don't have to read through one slide, one presentation. You can go ahead and read the rest, go through them. So if you want to, if you want to download, you will have to first sign up. The download option is here. Just create an account and sign up and you're able to use slide share and then another tool i wanted us to look at was google scholar so here you access content published by different scholars out there from all around the world so you can search for articles or even case laws so here you type in 
a topic of interest. Let's see. Question system. Okay, operating systems. And then you're able to access uh, different publications by different scholars, certified scholars in this case. So you can read through the different books. Uh, and if, if you're reading through a book and you pick interest, you want to continue reading, there's the option for save. So when you click this save, uh, the same option, you'll be able to access it in my library on Google Scholar. So let's say we are reading this book and you pick interest when you click save. So if in your library you have already an existing uh, reading list, it will automatically be saved. If you if you don't if you don't have, you can create one. So you create one. So this is how you access my library. Click on these three dots here. The three lines, then you're able to access my profile. You can go ahead to create a profile if you're a scholar. Uh, you go ahead to access my library. This is where you, you access the saved uh, books. The books that you save will be listed in, in my library. You can also use custom range in uh, Google Scholar. So why would you save like a book, for example, if such that when you're coming to, when you're going to read the book again, you don't have to go through the same procedure of searching for that part, uh, for that topic. Then you go through the process of scrolling again. You just have to access Google Scholar. Then you, you, you go straight to my library and then access the book that you have been reading. So that is one way you can also narrow your, how you can efficiently and effectively use search on the internet. Then the other was Google Cache. Now, oh, uh, no, but was sharing a topic, broadcast content. Okay, let's use that. Broadcast content. So like I said, Google Cache will help you access uh, information that all web pages that have been deleted. So if you look out, if you search for a topic, Every search result has these three dots at the end. There are these three dots. So if you tap on a, a search result and maybe it does not display, you can go uh, come back to this page and click on the three dots and a dialog box will appear. I believe you have seen it on the screen. At the, at the right bottom, there is the word catch, cached or catched, depending on how you pronounce it. So you click cached. So when you click cached, if this information initially was pub was deleted, you will be able to access it. The way it was. So if this was contributing to your research, you will read the document and see how relevant it is to you. If there's something you pick, you can go ahead and use it. So cash, uh, the use of cash help, helps us to access information that has been deleted from our web page. I hope that is clear. Slide share, Google Scholar and use of cash. Okay, so let us continue. As I see, we are running out of time. Then we can also search for different media. Uh, of course, uh, this you don't have to read only text. You can look out for photos, 
videos, audio, books. Uh, you can use Google Scholar or Google Books, and then also the voice search. So for photos, still, uh, we're going to see how to get the images. Then videos, there are known sites that have videos, for example, YouTube. You can access videos on YouTube. Uh, audio, there's uh, SoundCloud. You can access uh, audio about a topic on, on SoundCloud. So let us see how we can use voice search. So if you're to use voice search, it's this uh, icon of a microphone just uh, on the search engine. So if you're to use voice search, you have to really make sure that your voice is audible such that, that what you're saying is really captured correctly. So if you want to use it, you click voice, then you allow uh, use of your microphone. After allowing, you speak what you want to search for. Communication process. So, okay, so what I said was uh, captured. When you click the microphone to speak, you make sure your voice is audible enough such that uh, what you say is captured. And if the, if the words are captured, you'll get such results from Google. I believe that is clear. If it's not clear, please type in the chat and we shall be able to repeat. Okay. Okay, uh, Doreen says voice search can, can also be used as Shazam to find which song is playing. Um, no, but Kalule says that that amazing, I think that's amazing new information. Okay, thank you. So, from what we have looked at, uh, the different tips we have looked at, custom range, Google Alerts, among others. Oh, okay. No, but I hope you are able to find it on your gadget. It's one other easy way using voice search. Thank you for your submission. And I hope it was clear. Okay, Sharon says, I've ever used voice search. All right. So uh, it's one way of searching uh for information on the internet effectively so verifying a uh, source of information uh let me invite uh, there are some people we haven't heard from i hope they are still with us Doreen, Doreen, can you read for us what's on the slide Um, Doreen, are you speaking? I can't hear you. Hey, thank you so much for finding sources of information. Okay. Me? Doreen? Hello? Yes, I can hear you now. Please okay. Read okay. Verifying sources of information. Look closely at the URL to ensure it is genuine. Read the about and or contact page to see whether the site is dependable. See the telephone and email contacts provided. Are they dependable? If it is from social media pages, check the about, check their friends, their posts, updates to see whether that uh, whether that is the kind of company or organization to depend on. Thank you, Doreen. Uh, 
So yes, this is also important. As much as we search for information on the internet, it's very important that you verify the source. So uh, if, you, you, if you're searching, it's important to look at the URL to ensure it's genuine. Sometimes uh, those that cannot open are also not genuine. Uh, and then read the about. I remember when I was showing you the CIA fuck, uh, fuck book, I showed you that so I talked about the, the about section. If it's your first time visiting a site, it's very important you read the about. This way you'll know uh, what the site is all about. If it's something you can, if it's one you can depend on or not, if it's related to what you want to look for, then that gives you a go ahead to either move on and search more, for more information on the site or not. Then social media pages, this is something you shouldn't ignore because people are taking up the use of social media lately. So it's also important that you check out someone's social media page or even the organization's social media page. See the kinds of the kind of posts they put there. When do they last when did they last update? This will guide you when you searching for more information about a particular topic or about uh, that source of information. It will guide you to know whether to continue use, uh, searching on that site or to look for another. So verifying sources of information is very important. Then uh, we also need to evaluate uh, web pages. In this case, look out at the author, who is the publisher uh do you are they known uh what what angle do they publish on uh like look at the author generally what is there any information you, you can get uh, maybe on their social media page is there something they have written apart from that article you're reading are they biased uh then usually look out for like their reference list so this is also important because if, if you're searching for internet and the sources you're accessing are all in a, they're writing about a particular topic in a negative way, it's a picture you will get. So this is also important because when you're searching, you need to have an open mind to learn and gain information about that topic. So verifying, uh, the author and the different articles you're reading is also important. Then uh, here is another tool we can use to verify sites. It's called the whois.com site. We can use it to verify a site. So. In this case, if you have a site you want to verify, in this case, Macquarie University has come in my mind, so let's look at their website. So if you're trying this out, you can also look out, search for a different site. So how do you verify a copy? copy their domain, their address. Oh, sorry, it's who is, we had I hadn't searched for who is. Who is com is the verification site. Okay, so this is how it looks like. And we want to know about the Macquarie University website. So like I said, you copy their IP address and just above here, when you open who is, uh, there's this section of enter domain or IP. So when you enter it, you will get information about that website. You will get the domain name, their status, it's here. 
when it expires, the date it was registered, uh, the people the the people who registered it. So this helps you uh, know if it's a website you can rely on or not. So you get the different details about the site you searching information from. I don't know if it is clear the use of who is. Is the use of uh, who is clear to everyone? You use it to verify uh, a domain for a particular website. So that means you have to search for that particular website. Search for that particular website, then you get their IP or domain. Let's try for, let's see. Uh, one for daily monitor. Then you paste it in who is. Okay, so uh, it shows you the domain name, monitor, status, active. You're able to see who registered the site. So if, if the website is not genuine, the, the results will not show. So at least, or they may show, but when the information is not clear, so there you're able to know whether to go on or to look for another website that you can use to get the relevant information you might be interested in. So is this clear to everyone? The use of who is? Hello, Esther. Yes, it is clear to me. So. Very clear. Okay, thank you. So as we navigate and search for information on the internet, it's also good to compare uh, information from various sources because uh, the information is available and it's a lot. So if you read uh, from one source and you make your conclusions, you might have missed out from other what other sources are saying. So it's good to uh, read from different sources, make comparisons, then come up with your own view or opinion about a topic. Can we use it for social media platforms? Uh, something we can try out, but this is for, it's for websites, verifying domain sites or site domains. So for, uh, for social media platforms, I do not think can be used to verify social media platforms. Okay, so if there are no any questions, allow me to say thank you. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for your active participation. If there's something that we looked at and it is not clear, please feel free to ask. If there is no question, uh, I'll call my colleague to Mina Edward to take it on from here. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Patricia, for that really elaborative session. Thank you to all the participants who have been on the call.
for really engaging and actively participating. Really appreciate it. And uh, we implore you to take on the skills that have been uh, that have been looking at in this session to further better how you can search the internet effectively and get all the content that you are searching for in due time. Uh, we are also going to share the recording. Uh, it's going to be up on our Ultimate Media Consult, Ultimate Multimedia Consult YouTube channel, also on email and also on uh, in, the, in the joint WhatsApp group and Telegram group. I'm seeing feedback. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.